Hello, everyone, and uh, welcome to today's session. Thank you so much for joining in. The topic of discussion is business continuity and resurgence with the help of RPA during COVID-19. This webinar is being conducted by Novigo Solutions. Novigo is an end-to-end -end analytics, IT services, and RPA solutions provider. Founded in 2012, Novigo has attained UART's most premium diamond partnership level and is also a UiPath certified professional services provider. In fact, the only one in the MENA region today. We are currently supporting more than 50 clients in the RPA universe in their RPA journeys and road. On the panel today, we have Shihab Kalander, Deepu Vijay Kumar, Deepu Matthew, and Priyatam Minamaredi. Shihab is a co founder and chief customer officer at Novigo Solutions. He was responsible for initiating and setting up the robotic process automation. Center of Excellence at Novigo. Currently, the RPA COE has more than 100 plus UiPath certified professionals. This team has more than 100,000 consulting hours, over 250 plus engagements for 50 plus clients. Deepu Vijay Kumar is a practice lead at Novigo. He has more than 16 years client experience in business process optimization, delivery, and implementation for clients across multiple regions and domains. Deepu Matthews is an RPA consultant with more than 15 years IT experience with the bulk being in private banking domain, digital platforms and web content management applications. Priyatam Minamaredi is the digital transformation and robotics process automation initiatives for Aquin Financial Corporation. He has successfully started the enterprise RPA program from ground up and established a mature center of excellence. A recorded version of this webinar will be made available and mailed to all of you. At any point, please feel free to drop questions for our panelists on the question tab here in Zoom webinars. So uh, some of the topics that we will be covering next is how uh, we can use RPA for business continuity and for resurgence during the times of COVID. So over to Shihab to introduce the webinar. Thank you, Ramzi, for the uh, quick introduction. Uh, Thank you everyone for joining us. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you, Priyatam, uh, special guest uh, who's uh, accepted our invite and joining us. And to You're share. welcome, uh, Shihab. So Novigo Solutions uh, has been offering RPA services for almost uh, three and a half years now. We always ask clients to analyze business impact and continue, continuity requirements for all processes. But with the current crisis, the automations themselves are taking center stage as pillars of organizational resilience and enablers of, enablers of uh, uh, business continuity. The, uh, the pandemic crisis has almost all businesses. So revenues were lost, business continues in threat and uh, planned growth trajectories are in a distant dream. And in some cases, sustenance itself is a challenge. So Ramji, I think you can move to uh, the next slide. So for at the same time, there are some organizations uh, that rode over this huge impact like it was nothing more than a slight hiccup. Uh, today, they are largely unaffected. Uh, these organizations were early adopters of adoption, automation and uh, they were well ahead in their RPA roadmaps when the COVID-19 struck them. When the world is hesitating for IT spends, they are increasing the budget assigned for RPA activities because they are, this is the need of an hour. Some of the organizations are feeling that this is the need of an hour. So today, I'm going to uh, say that uh, automation from a business continuity perspective, how it is all helping the organization. So I'm, I'm listing down, there are a few points which we feel uh, is helping the organization. The first one is a productivity boost uh, and relieving the burden of staff during peak volumes beyond what is physically manageable. The second point which we feel is uh, quickly adopt the ongoing changes in demand and their behavior. The third one is effective and uh, controlled transition to online business models. So this is one of the major changes which we are seeing in the organization. The other point which we are seeing, improving customer experience with faster resolution and responses using automation. The one is uh, reducing strain on networks by spreading workloads and processing transactions during non-peak hours, especially some of the financial uh, institutions are adopting these kind of uh, automation. And the last one, which we feel is elevating dependence on priority processing and workforce needs. 
so during the situation it is largely helping all the organization moving on to the next slide so whether to automate or not was a dilemma in the past if it was good to have in the past it's the need of the hour today the automation priorities today is to understand where to start with depending on where the current state of various industries is the start point should be the enterprise business continuity plan or business impact analysis this should identify a number of possible rpa opportunities that survival adoptive or growth modes the next key step is to then define a suitable scope for automatable automatable activities that impact or support essential products and services taking of workforce agility locations technologies recovery time scales and disruption tolerance and level into account once these tasks have been completed set a priority scale to activities depending on factors such as customer impact compliance requirements and others the best advantage about rpa in these times are that it's economical to start with and quick to deploy and easy to scale it's never too late to start we are here to help you out so any rpa uh, pilot which one for any organization wouldn't be too much uh, uh, economical burden once the pilot is started and uh, see the impact then always uh, rpa can be expanded across the organization so with this i leave it to the other panelists to get into some of the use cases how we have helped the organization to do the automation thank you ramji i think uh, you can move to the next slide yeah yeah thank you so much for setting the context to today's discussion shia so for those of us just joining us grand welcome we have been sharing ideas and discussing ways to leverage the power of rpa for business continuity and resurgence if anybody has any questions quick quick reminder to our panelists you can drop them in the questions tab and we will be covering the same towards the end of the session and now I'd like to call on deepu vijay kumar and deepu matthew to take us through the webinar over to you deepu thank you ranji thank you shiva so uh, let's have a look at the significance of automation during the current crisis okay so social distancing and work from home becoming the new norm in this unprecedented times service providers are facing significant challenges in their ability to maintain business as usual even though people are physically apart the work continues to come in and it needs to get done so some of the challenges which are based based out of connectivity and security which limits the employees to access the critical business systems and it can lead to serious business disruptions most of us would have already faced this type of challenges this is where rpa comes in using rpa rule based tasks can be shifted from people to robots it can also help in improving productivity with fewer resources process dependency on individual employee circumstances can also be reduced since the solution is scalable when there is a need of an hour to scale up your particular operations you rpa will be able to help there too and finally there is an immediate reduction in the operational cost too yeah let's move on to the next slide yeah so what is rpa robotic process automation or rpa in simple terms refers to a software that can be easily programmed to do a basic task across applications just as human workers do the software robot can be taught in a workflow with multiple steps and applications now how new is this technology how new is rpa while the automation was developing since a while the emergence of the term robotic process automation can be dated to early 2000s so now where did it come from what are its origins in order to appreciate the current state of rpa we need to first understand where or and what came before it starting primarily with the developments after 1990 three pre three key predecessors of the robotic process automation are actually attributed as screen scraping workflow automation and artificial intelligence let's see what they were offering screen scraping was the first technology that created a bridge between the current systems and incompatible legacy systems it has also been used to extract data from the web on the presentation layer screen scraping technology also helped to comb through tons of websites extract the relevant data process it into structured format for further processing workflow automation as a platform provides flexible tools to improve the way you work it gives the ability to create and optimize workflow in an ideal way find redundant tasks automate work processes identify potential areas of improvement and achieve new levels of efficiency however most of these tools had its own challenges in completely automating an end to end process predominantly regarding its flexibility and integration between disparate systems artificial intelligence as most of you guys know refers to the capability of a program or a machine to think and learn in general the term artificial intelligence means a program which mimics human cognition 
an AI enabled process would be able to perform tasks that normally human intervention and intelligence is required. Those tasks were previously highly dependent on humans for their judgment and decision making ability. As the saying goes, the whole is greater than the sum of its parts. While each of these advancements and breakthroughs in automation technology was somewhat seismic, the evolution and development of RPA and its ability to combine, refine and reimagine certain aspects of each of these technologies is what truly makes RPA such an impactful technological platform. In a nutshell, I would like to put it this way, RPA is a developing technology relying on artificial intelligence, screen stepping, workflow, which elevates these technologies to a new level, advancing their capabilities in a significantly improved way. Yeah, let's move on to the next slide. Let's quickly glance through the type of automations possible through RPA. So first one is the attended automation, which requires users or administrators intervention. It is usually executed on the employee's workstation by specific events, commands, or actions. Attended automation is agile and needs to be user-friendly since the staff needs to juggle multiple interfaces or screens. Unattended automation is a self-triggered and it is being triggered from different applications. Unattended RPA bots can work 24 by 7, 365 days in the batch mode. It can be accessed remotely through several interfaces or platforms. With hybrid automation, human and virtual workforces pass tasks back and forth to each other with full visibility working together rather than in silos. This is a new concept which just came in and this results in a genuine end-to-end -end RPA solution that combines robot efficiency and scalability with human creativity and flexibility. So now most of these RPA tools available in the market are offering multiple cab tools and the plugins which actually provides this feasibility for the hybrid automation. Let's move on. So what can RPA do for you? RPA robots are capable of mimicking most of the human interactions. They can log into applications, move files, folders, copy and paste data, fill in forms, extract structured and semi-structured data from documents, scrape browsers, and many more. Essentially, any high volume, business rule driven, repetitive process qualifies for RPA. Yeah, let's move on to the next slide. Let's see the main advantages of RPA. RPA is a known intrusive in and leverages the existing infrastructure without causing disruptions to underlying systems, which would be very difficult to replace if needed. RPA solutions are generally lightweight and they are easy to implement. RPA differs from classic business process automation in two key ways. People with business process and industry expertise, but no programming experience can start automating the processes with RPA tools with only very few weeks of training. There has been multiple offerings from the different providers for specifically for the business users, which will help them to start building small tasks, which, is, which belongs to their day-to-day -day operations. Unlike traditional IT projects, which can take up, up to 12 to 18 months with substantial cost, RPA process delivery normally takes around one to three months. In contrast to other IT solutions, RPA allows organizations to automate processes with minimum time and cost. Now let's have a look at some of the benefits of RPA solution. RPA expedites processes, leading to an increase in throughput and boost overall productivity. An RPA robot costs fraction of an FT and can work continuously, which results in a cost reduction of 35 to 65 percentage for offshore operations and 10 to 30 percentage for onshore process operations. Automating the process using bots lead to better customer service because when the majority of the repeated incidents or queries are automatically handled, you've got more power in the process. A company that receives Lots of customer inquiries, for example, can free staff to deal with more complex questions, which requires more human intelligence and their decision-making capabilities. Companies in highly regulated industries, such as insurance and banking, are finding that automation is a cheap and fast way for applying superior capability to the problem of compliance. RPA removes data gaps between desperate sources and logs all actions completed by the software robots through automation. This allows the employees to proactively recognize and manage any compliance issues and consistently run internal reviews. RPA process also ensures data privacy and protection of personal data through unattended automation. RPA adoption provides benefits to employees too. The tasks which they hated to do will be performed by the machines. So this will relieve them from the rising work pressure. So in simple terms, the intention of RPA is to take the robot out of a human so that the humans can in can invest the majority of the time, which requires 
activities which require human intelligence as well as their ability to take decisions. Let's move on. Let's have a quick check on the RPA tools and the new market trends available, uh, corresponding to this technology in the market. Yeah, let's let's go to the next slide. Yep. So, hyper automation. Yeah, just can you go back to the previous one? Yeah, hyper automation is an end-to-end -end automation approach accomplished by harnessing the power of multiple technologies. As no single single tool can replace humans, hyper automation involves a combination of tools, including robotic process automation, intelligent business management softwares, and AI. In this approach, organizations rapidly identify and automate as many business processes as possible. It combines the right technologies in order to automate, simplify, discover, design, measure, and manage workflows and processes across the enterprise. Hyper automation has been rated as number one on Gartner's top 10 strategy technology trends for 2020. As no, yeah, let's move on. Among the different RPA tools available in the today's market, UiPath, Blue Prism, and Automation Anywhere are the current market leaders. Due to time constraints, for today's discussion, we will be covering offerings from UiPath. UiPath has been recognized as a leader in the Forrester wave, achieving the highest possible scores in strategy and market presence categories. We predominantly offer our RPA services using UiPath. Yep, let's go to the next one. Yeah, let's have a look at the UiPath production suite for hyper automation. So for discovery, the following tools have been offered, which are required for identifying the right process. Automation Hub, which helps to manage the entire automation lifecycle. It helps to capture automation ideas from the employees themselves. So this tool basically will help to onboard all the employees in the organization so that everybody can actually submit the processes and it can actually, the center of excellence or the main core RPA team can evaluate the processes, identify the best candidates and push it to the pipeline for their automation journey. Task mining tool helps to capture, analyze, and prioritize the processes. Process mining tool create digital visualizations that depict the business processes. Task capture is basically an extension of these things. It captures the process details and it exports the screenshots, step-by-step -step descriptions, and detailed annotations for preparing the process definition documents. So this is one of the main challenges that you see in almost all the processes, all the projects, where how to create the documentation so that the development can be actually taken up how to capture any process without dropping out any particular step in that process. So most of the, uh, the UiPath has already come up with a tool which does that. Once you execute the process on the screen, all these things will be automatically captured and it will help you to basically document the process by itself. For build, Studio X, Studio and Studio Pro, which are the different variants of the development platform offered by the UiPath for different types of users. So I, as I mentioned earlier, there are predominantly three types of users which has been the, brought up by UiPath. One will be developer, one will be business user, and will be test users. So for each of these three users, they have actually come up with these three different offerings. During the managed phase, the RPA solution is developed, is deployed and optimized. Orchestrator is a server-based application that helps to orchestrate robots at an enterprise level. Automation Cloud is a SaaS delivery model from UiPath where there will not be any upfront hardware and infrastructure cost which is incurred to the customer. AI Fabric helps customers to deploy their own AI skills or pre-trained AI skills developed by UiPath or their technology partners. Task Manager helps to create, design, and map test cases and their execution results to the requirements. For Run, there are attended, unattended, and test boards. Engage offerings are mainly to implement automation use cases where humans and robots can collaborate together seamlessly. In this approach, specific sections of a workflow which require human intelligence can be performed by humans while bots will perform the rule-based steps. UiPath Assistant and Action Center comes under this category. UiPath also provides easy integration with chatbots. Once a solution is implemented for measuring RPA operations with specific KPIs and strategic business outcomes, insights can be used. Yeah, let's move on. Yeah, I will now request my colleague Deepu Matthews to present for elaborating some of the RP use cases which we have implemented. Over to you, Deepu. Thanks, Deepu. Good afternoon, everyone. So today I'm going to walk you through some of the use cases which we have already implemented in the uh, industry. Uh, different use cases from uh, banking, insurance, uh, retail, manufacturing, and all will be discussed. Uh, so to start with, so during this uh, current uh, time of the COVID. Uh, so we are having, uh, we are um, making sure that okay, RPA process automation can um, like 
create a process which are like recession proof operations and like uh, which we can run across various sectors so all the use cases which we will be covering today uh, were implemented pre covid and are and they are working very well right now they do not uh, have any uh, have the same limitations as uh, we, hu we humans have and all of them can like work uh, 24 bar 7 to generate value for the business and save the money recently uh, we are also seeing a, a big boost in the new rp adoption uh, and expansion of the existing rp implementations also so let us take a look at our first use case about reconciliation from the finance and insurance sector so in accounting reconciliation is the process of ensuring two sets of records are in agreement reconciliation is used to ensure that money leaving an account matches the actual money spent most of the financial organizations today invest considerable time in checking and matching transactions manually preparing and posting journals to complete the required uh, required bank reconciliations after that one so for a typical uh, reconciliation process uh, it involves fetching of relevant data uh, from like uh, different transaction level data from multiple sources and most of the times the data from different sources will be coming in different formats and the systems which generates the data uh, which is used for reconciliation that will be like uh, created during uh, different uh, time frames uh, during the day so extracting the data from uh, in a single step uh, of a process is a difficult task to be done also uh, most of the times uh, uh, there won't be any unique identifier present in the transaction data which is coming from the different systems uh, and it uh, which can be used for easily uh, recognizing the transactions one to one and like do reconciliation most and the unique id is uh, normally like uh, created manually by the users as a combination key between multiple data points uh, present in the different uh, systems with the emergence of uh, various digital channels also uh, the reconciliation task can uh, cannot be just like done uh, through the like the working days it has to be done for the weekends and uh, holidays also also there is a tremendous spike in the volume of the online transactions uh, which is actually creating a, a demand for a scalable solution so for um, when we implemented this rpa solution for this one uh, the manual tasks which were performed by the users were completely automated through an unattended automation so bot can log into the different systems which are required uh, or like which are providing the data for the reconciliation download the reports from the systems uh, do any data manipulation which is required uh, generate the unique ids which can be used for reconciliation and then uh, finally perform the reconciliation reconciliation reports uh, exception reports any bulk correction entries uh, that need to be generated uh, from the reconciliation are all automatically generated by the process and these uh, reports are either like uh, emailed or uploaded to a, a system uh, where like the uh, respective stakeholders can like take a look at that one and do necessary action on top of that uh, we have implemented uh, the rpa reconciliation solution for a wide variety of uh, use cases and most of the times uh, the number of systems involved are like more than two and we had to like perform like two way three way and four way reconciliations also and some of the uh, reconciliations which we have uh, done uh, include goods and service tax reconciliation payment gateway reconciliation prepaid card or sort value card reconciliations uh, credit card payment reconciliation and if you take a moderate rpa solution for reconciliation which is a three way reconciliation uh, it can be implemented in uh, around like 6 weeks of time and we have also observed that around 60 to 80 percentage of reduction in the execution time um, is achieved after like we implement the rpa solution reconciliation uh, like the process which used to take around like 4 to 5 hours of like manual effort on a daily basis Uh, is now reduced to around like 15 to 20 minutes of unattended automation so let us move to our next use case uh, which is from retail and manufacturing sector uh, so in the today's uh, global workforce uh, a slow pro purchase order and or invoice processing uh, process can actually uh, cripple your business manual processing and legacy systems hamper the business and do uh, more harm than good digitalization makes the clunky processes uh, work like a charm it's perfect for tedious and labor intensive administrative processes like uh, purchase order creation invoice approval and more these tasks which used to confirm valuable amount of uh, time and resources can now be automated uh, and to drive faster and more reliable and affordable results for the organizations most of these use cases uh, start with a digitally scanned document from which data need to be manually extracted 
verified and then uh, processed into uh, ERP system. Even though there are like multiple uh, automation flows available in the uh, current uh, day ERP systems, uh, it is a big challenge to digitalize the or digitize the, uh, the data which is present in uh, the documents and extract that one and then like uh, process that one in ERP. So RPA can help in this case. And the current RPA solution which we have done, uh, it can integrate, it is integrated with multiple OCR engines, including uh, machine language based algorithms. Uh, this is used for extracting the data and this extracted data can be uh, presented uh, in a validation station back to the user for manual verification. And once approved, the data is entered into the ERP for uh, further processing. So whenever we are like uh, uh, presenting the data in the validation station, the data sets can also be like uh, trained uh, uh, like for further uh, modifications and like that can later be used for like unattended automation also. So RPA can like uh, uh, finally uh, capture all the uh, processing results from the ERP system and also like download the files which are like created by the ERP system and it can be shared across the end users via email or like uploaded into a shared drive for them to take a look. We have also uh, deployed multiple ERP solutions, uh, including Oracle EBS, Oracle Cloud Fusion, SAP, Info, uh, Microsoft Dynamics, uh, to be uh, to name a few. So let us move to the next use case, which is for uh, onboarding, um, offboarding, and access provisioning. So employee onboarding, offboarding, and access provisioning are some of the uh, is some is one of the uh, most common use case uh, which can be implemented across multiple sectors. Uh, Resource onboarding like uh, normally is completed by the HRMS uh, team and like it will uh, flow the uh, that information is like uh, flown into the HRMS system from where it will um, most of the times trigger a, an alert uh, into the creation of the user ID in the active directory. So it is either done uh, directly as a uh, email to the um, AD team or like it gets created as a ticket in a ticketing system from where the AD team gets assigned that one and like they pick up the ticket and they'll work on that one. So often uh, once a user is onboarded uh, and like their user ID is created, there will be a lot of applications uh, for which they need to get mandatory access to as part of the onboarding. Uh, also uh, during the course of their uh, career, they will be um, adding or like requesting more um, user, uh, like more access to other systems which are involved, uh, which is normally like created as a email or as a ticketing, um, uh, like in the ticketing tool, they uh, create the uh, ticket. Once it is approved by the uh, line manager, it is normally getting processed by the ITT. So user offboarding task, uh, that is also triggered from the HRMS tool. And the SLA for this task is uh, very critical since employee access uh, should not be active uh, after their last working day. Operational errors in the manual deactivation of the users uh, can raise red flags during the security audits. So for the RPA solution which we implemented, uh, we have uh, done an unattended uh, automation for this and the bot uh, extracts the information from the HRMS system or from the ticketing tools or from the email and perform the various access uh, like requ requirements that need to be happening on the various systems that is uh, provided for that particular uh, user and then they are like either like no uh, like notified through an email or like the system in the uh, ticketing tool is updated with the results of that one. So some of the main benefits of uh, implementing this RPA solution, uh, we have uh, seen around like 70 to uh, 80 percentage of reduction in the SLA, uh, like not the reduction, the improvement in the SLA. Uh, since the uh, uh, jobs are like scheduled uh, in predefined intervals, uh, the bots can uh, complete the task uh, much faster than humans. Uh, the operational errors have like reduced to zero. Availability of the audit trails uh, ensures that okay, any discrepancies uh, listed during the security audit can be like easily cleared with this thing. So now let us uh, talk about uh, how we can plan um, your RPA, RPA journey for a particular organization. So there is a common misconception about IT process automation that it, extreme, it is extremely expensive, a huge uh, pain to implement and that even after you invest a ton of money and spend months of getting it up and running, it doesn't work as promised. To the contrary, Automating your IT workflows and process using RPA doesn't have to be costly or difficult and it can work amazingly well provided it's appro it is approached the right way. The first step in, so let us move to the next uh, slide. So the first step in identifying 
uh, or like starting your RPA journey is identifying the process which can be automated uh, in your organization. And once the process are uh, identified, we need to uh, evaluate and like find the ROI benefits it can uh, in turn like uh, generate for your organization. So this is done by analyzing the process and performing feasibility checks. So this includes uh, process volumetry analysis, uh, process and environment stability. Uh, what are the input data types which is uh, used by this, uh, the different process, the applications involved in that one. And once that uh, analysis is performed, an automation score can be generated for each and every process uh, across the organization. So that uh, automation score will include an automation potential, whether like uh, how feasible that uh, process is uh, readily available for automation. What is the ease of implementation uh, if you are like going to automate this process and how many hours and FTEs it can save on an yearly basis as the benefits for each of these uh, use cases. So based on our experience, uh, the process from the finance, insurance, IT operations and HR departments across various organizations, they are the best suited for automation. Let's move to the next one. Once all the process are analyzed and if the automation score is generated, uh, we can create your automation pipeline or like the uh, automation hub tool which is provided by UiPath that can be used for this purpose. So it will help you in like uh, gathering all the information required for each and every process um, and like creating the uh, uh, and performing the aut aut automation score for this one. So once the process are like identified and your automation pipeline is created, the processes can be like uh, divided into four different quadrants as uh, depicted here. And normally like during the initial adoption of uh, RPA for an organization, uh, the process which uh, fall into the QQWINS uh, quadrant are like uh, automated first for uh, like realization of the fastest ROI. The uh, followed by that one, uh, the process from the low hanging fruits and the must do improvement quadrants are like automated. So let us uh, move to the next slide. Okay, so uh, here we are like talking about the RPA journey and approach. Uh, so a crawl, walk and run approach is in the new concept for any of the organizations uh, which are implementing like complex IT or business process management solutions. So we recommend the same for the RPA too. The crawl phase is the initial pilot program with uh, RPA and it might take up to four to six weeks of implementation where a pilot uh, process is identified, uh, it is uh, analyzed and then an RPA solution is created for that one and uh, implemented for the user. So once, uh, what, what matters during this phase is the RPA is applied to a process uh, which can be, uh, which can easily establish the credibility and show the uh, enough ROI can be real, uh, realized uh, with the capabilities of the RPA technology. So in the work stage, uh, we look for the process that would benefit from the RPA which can be uh, bringing in additional ROA to the organization. And uh, like on a uh, normal uh, time frame, like it will take up to around like 12 weeks to uh, realize the uh, work phase. So going to the next stage, which is the uh, run stage, which is the most uh, time consuming and like effort consuming uh, state of the RPA life cycle. And it normally takes around like uh, four to six months to uh, realize. So during this stage, the RPA center of excellence is in the organization will emerge. The evaluation, evaluation of the process is held across multiple divisions that are uh, available in the organization and that could benefit from the RPA. This phase also involves uh, building a team of stakeholders that also can uh, bring technical and like process expertise. So the bottom line is IT process automation need not be very costly and very difficult to implement provided you follow the steps above starting off small and slowly scaling up, you can easily uh, realize the true benefits of RPA. Uh, Ramsey, we can move to the next slide. Yeah, so uh, thank you Deepu Vijay Kumar and Deepu Matthew for those wonderful slides. <laughs> and a quick reminder for all our attendees that a recorded version of this webinar will be made to everyone. So. Actually, I've had the opportunity to work with Priyatam from the time he started the RPA journey for Aquin Financial Solutions. And there was just so much that he can learn from him. I'm very glad to introduce him and have him here to share his experiences. So over to you, Priyatam. Thanks, Ramji. Uh, thanks, everyone. Hello, everyone. Hope I'm audible. Uh, good afternoon. Good morning or good evening. 
to everyone in India, uh, Middle East or uh, Southeast, or wherever you are in the world. At the outset, I would like to thank uh, Novigo for uh, providing me an opportunity to talk about automation and RPA. Uh, myself, I am uh, Priyatam from Minamaradi, or in short, you can call me Pri. I work as a senior manager in our digital transformation in Akun Financial, based out of uh, Bangalore. Akun is into mortgage business, based out of uh, USA. We mainly serve home or residential mortgages. For example, you go to a bank for a loan or home loan mortgage. Once a loan is made, then it's sent to a company called a loan servicers like Aquan. We are one of the leading servicers where we take the loan and service the loan for the rest of the uh, lifetime. Can you hear me? Can you all hear me? Yes, we are audible. Okay. 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 To start off, I would like to uh, give a brief intro into my uh, RPA journey. I mean, uh, Aquan's adoption of automation and the RPA in particular. I was part of uh, data management and my team was indeed involved in automation, but uh, we were mainly involved in uh, uh, traditional automation using uh, big data ecosystem and we're also a big time into Python. Uh, so we already had uh, exposure to automation, uh, but we really didn't take any big step you know, into RPA. Uh, so due to leadership change and, uh, and direction change into organization, we decided to look into RPA in the early 2019. So I was involved that I was, I was one of the first members who, who were asked to look into RPA. And then uh, my team, who did some uh, POCs, we looked into various tools and uh, kind of settled with uh, UiPath. And then uh, luckily we had a, a trial version of UiPath and we did some uh, POCs, roadshows, and a lot of demos, a lot of demos across my organizations to uh, selling the tool, uh, selling the RPA program to all the leaderships uh, uh, and to stakeholders and finally, our organization decided to go with uh, RPA in June of 2019, exactly about a year back. And then we came across uh, Novigo. And uh, thankfully, uh, we decided to, uh, we actually tried different vendors and finally we settled with Novigo uh, due to the expertise in RPA and also the recommendations from different uh, stakeholders. So Novigo helped us set up our RPA environment and also provided with uh, expertise. Uh, so robotics finally or officially got started in August of 2019. So, which is when actually we procured licenses, uh, environment, and then Novigo came on site and they helped us establish the RP environment. And at the same time, we also decided to establish a center of excellence uh, in uh, Akun Financials. Uh, so, RPA program started with uh, great success initially. Uh, that's mainly due to a uh, factor that uh, we decided to take a uh, couple of small steps instead of a giant leap. So, we wanted to show some benefits to automation. So, we went with uh, a small and easy use cases, uh, quick wins, and uh, showed the benefits to leaderships. And uh, as, as at every step, we, we had something to show, a quick win, and then uh, strategically we moved forward. So that was kind of a Q4, and then we had uh, initial success. And in 2020, so beginning of the year, we focused on targeting uh, bigger and bolder ideas, and also to uh, trying to bring some maturity into RPA program. Uh, so we are working with BUs to get some uh, complicated, uh, complex use cases, in the first, uh, first quarter of uh, Q1. So before you could realize, uh, COVID, uh, COVID hit us and it hit us really hard. Aquan, uh, so my company Aquan, uh, we had been a traditionally onsite company that is everyone expected to go to office and work. So we really didn't have a, a working home culture. So remote working was more of an exception. So you had to uh, ask permission from manager enough for any uh, exigencies. Otherwise we were, we were expected to come to work. So you can imagine, we wouldn't have anticipated the scale at which you know, we had to plan for remote working. So the COVID came, COVID came really fast and uh, we were scrambling to enable remote working for employees. So about uh, 6,000 employees across uh, USA, India and Philippines. So leadership proactively uh, started to empower employees for remote working. But by this time, everyone in the company knew RPA and the approach to help with the, the basic activities. So it's a uh, business continuity planning. So everyone started to help IT hardware teams in closing laptops. So you can imagine uh, everybody had desktops at work and now we had to procure laptops, Chromebooks, so whatever they can be procured. And uh, our task was to provision. Uh, mainly we were, asked to, uh, we were asked to help them, help the IT team uh, provision RSA tokens. So RSA token is uh, kind of a two-factor authentication for VPN users. So if anybody use VPN, then we probably use uh, primarily RSA token to uh, kind of get a 
one time passcode uh, to authenticate kind of a two factor authentication so we had to provision close to 5000 tokens because they procured that many laptops or chromebooks whatever they can so each token took about 3 minutes to do it manually so everybody was working anywhere from 10 to 15 hours because they knew they had to go remote very soon yeah, because code was hitting code is coming there were very bad news across the world from europe or usa and uh, in even settings were very bad so we're preparing in india to be, to get our company uh, to be remote ready so rpa team pitched in and uh, we had to create uh, bots overnight help our uh, business units uh, get this uh, task over so i mean it wasn't a smooth ride but uh, not less uh, it was a huge success and uh, that gave us a lot of exposure to a lot of uh, departments so they kind of recognized rpa and the power of automation so that was a trigger to create a new business unit uh, called digital transformation so you would have heard of uh, data management or, or traditional names like data governance but uh, digital transformation is relatively new and uh, organizations are adopting it in a, uh, in this day and age uh, to become more efficient cut cost digital automation transformation uh, so then they carved this dip- new department and they moved us to this uh, new uh, BU called uh, digital transformation. So due to COVID and uh, 100% remote working was enabled as an organization, as a company, we realized new set of issues. So now that everybody's at home, everybody's working from home, everybody were, uh, so we had a lot of issues. So now that everybody's remote, uh, working remotely, most of them are getting logged out of the PCs. They had expired passwords. They had expired issues, they were locking out, and it was a overall huge increase in the calls to help desk. I mean, we didn't have much of help desk presence. Uh, again, there is only so much help desk can do. I mean, you cannot really uh, throw people at help desk and say, please help. It was difficult to hire during COVID times, so they, they just could not handle. Calls were going from anywhere from 15 minutes to one hour, and people were frustrated, they were dropped off, a uh, lot of issues. Uh, so employees are calling help desk, waiting for 40 minutes, and some some were dropping off, and this whole thing got out of hand, escalations. And before you know, our PA team was again asked to pitch in. In any way we can help them, help IT uh, help desk team. So during the same time, we were actually proactively identified opportunity, and uh, we came up with bots to automate kind of help desk activities like uh, password resets, account unlocks, and a host of other help desk requests that are high in volume. So we kind of took a Pareto uh, principle, like 80-20 principle, you invest 20% of the time and you know, get 80% of the benefits. So we try to work with the uh, help desk team to identify top three or uh, top three or four use cases, uh, three or four tickets that had high volumes and then uh, you know, automated using bots. We primarily use UA path. And uh, we actually went a step ahead and introduced chat bots. So it's more of a hybrid automation. Uh, we actually integrated UA path with a host of other tools. We mainly use Python. Uh, to create chat bots. So instead of uh, employees typing in the information, which leads to uh, errors in data entry or data quality issues, we made this uh, help desk request completely click based requests. So now users were able to go to a chatbot. Uh, by the way, we actually named chatbot as Oscar. So we made it a point to name all our bots preferably with the human names like Eve, Optimus, Elvis, or uh, one of our uh, crowdsource uh, award winning name was uh, Aladdin. Uh, so we actually crowdsourced the names and then we used to give awards to people you know, which had the best name. So this chatbot, also called Oscar, is based on a Python architecture with a single sign enabled and integrates with the UI path using the API-based architecture. So the chatbot is just a front to gather the data from the end users in a structured format, but everything else was done in the backend by RPA bots. So in as few as three clicks, Users were able to do what they could not do, waiting for more than 30 minutes over the phone. The average SLA was like one minute. You heard that right, it's one minute uh, SLA. The time when they start, uh, they click the request, submit the request in chatbot, and the time it takes to fulfill the ticket. Just, uh, it was uh, t- totally end-to-end uh, transparency. They had notifications from the bot with all the emails saying, your ticket was submitted, this is the ticket number. We also integrated with uh, ServiceNow platform where we actually do ticketing. So we had UA path work with uh, Python uh, for chatbot and also with ServiceNow for ticketing. It was uh, uh, just whole thing into it working fine. So we had one minute of SLA. This was a huge win and a lot of uh, value add to the company. And more than that, the perception changed. So from what used to be manual, 
uh, frustrating experience to the end users. We made it much more smoother and enjoyable experience. So in, end users started uh, actually using Oscar. So now they started giving us ideas. So because now it's used by company wide, this chatbot Oscar. So now they started giving ideas like, why can't you automate uh, this request? Why can't automate that request? So we used to get a lot of requests. And uh, then we came, then HR came to us and asked us, how can you introduce a chatbot to HR? I mean, they don't know that a lot of bots are in the, in the process. I mean, like RPA, but they just know the chatbot in the front end and they say, how can you use chatbot to HR? Like for hiring purposes, resume screening. So a lot of first hour activities and we're actually exploring how we can uh, use that. So similar to chatbot, we have uh, also rolled out IVR based solution. Uh, IVR is uh, interactive voice recognition software. So it's a uh, technology is based on uh, Amazon, Lex and Lambda. Akwan is uh, heavily into Amazon cloud. We are into Amazon ecosystem. That's why we try to use what uh, as far as the first uh, rule of thumb, we try to use Amazon ecosystem. If not, we try elsewhere. So we rolled out IVR also. So now users can not only go to uh, chatbot, they can also take their uh, phone call, uh, uh, call phone number and get their tickets uh, fulfilled. So a lot of uh, business units have now realized that automation is the way forward. Uh, doesn't matter COVID or any other pandemic, there is more reliability using bots automation. I mean, employees can come one day, they can call sick, but bots are done. They don't complain, they don't take sick, they don't fall sick, they don't ask for a pay rise, so pay high karana, they are reliable. So, so the perception changed. So now they, everybody wants to go into automation. Uh, we have been using autom RPA for about nine months. And during this time, uh, our journey came from, uh, we started with one studio beginning of last year in August with one studio and one bot, and now we have 10 studios and 11 bots. Uh, we expanded our team from five initially to 11 now, which also includes no good employees. We automated close to 40 process in the, uh, during this nine, uh, nine months, and we serve about 15 different departments across my organizations. And we have saved around uh, 70,000 hours, 70,000 personal, personal hours during this nine months of uh, bot execution. I mean, and initially we had very less savings because we just getting started. So these savings are mainly realized in the Q2 and uh, Q1 or Q2 uh, this year. So now we're trying to put our put our foot into cognitive automation. So this question is, what's next? And uh, we're trying to uh, explore the other avenues of automation, like cognitive automation, voice, like uh, NLP, NLG, NLU, natural language uh, automation, and the other use cases in cognitive. It's not easy, but uh, you got to, got to start somewhere at some point. So we, do, we don't have any success yet to tell in our cognitive space, but we started and uh, we are working on those things. It has been a remarkable journey. Uh, we have indeed transformed our organization uh, to make it more lean, more, more efficient, introduce automation in our DNA. It's more of a perception change. So people now talk about automation first. Before they talk about headcount, they want to talk about automation, how bots can help them. And some of our uh, departments are now talking about uh, reducing the key industry metrics. Uh, for example, the other day when we were having a discussion with leadership in India, uh, one of the VPs told that they are now with this automation that went live in uh, April, they see that this key industry metric in mortgage industry may come down from 25 days to 10 days. So what is to take, I can't divulge more details about this, this metric, but uh, what is to take about 25 days might come down to 10 days. So this is a kind of uh, aggressive goals our departments are now targeting. So this, all, this, all this is possible because our uh, departments are now confident because they have RPA, they are employed with RPA team and we are, we are, I'm, I'm, I'm there to help them. And automation does work and it's a proven formula. So that said, it wasn't a smooth journey and not everything is hunky-dory. We had our uh, share of ups and downs during this journey. There are some uh, platforms where automation uh, didn't work as expected. So one of the experience was mainly because uh, these applications were built on legacy architecture and very difficult for automation. Uh, so I mean, you, you, got to, you got to take everything in a positive way. So where you can't to learn it and try to get better in the next process. So we are not, so as a team and as a uh, COE, we're not done yet. We just, as I see we just started. So in closing, I would like to emphasize the importance of automation and how digital disruption is taking over our companies and organizations. In short, I'd like to emphasize on three words, ideate, innovate, or perish. Because if we don't disrupt, then somebody else will do, and definitely we'll be left behind.
So that's it. Uh, back to Ramzi. I can take any questions if you have. If you can't answer, I promise to get back to you. Sure, sure. Thank you so much uh, for, those, uh, you know, for sharing your experiences with us. And what a lovely way of getting the uh, you know, entire organization to start thinking from an automation first era. Like you said, ideate, innovate, or perish. And uh, that holds very good in these terms where people who have already started with their automation are tiding over these times with much more ease and finesse than the others. I'm sure we are all taking back something valuable with us from your words. So moving on to uh, uh, the next slide or the next uh, part of this webinar, that is I'm opening up the questions to the panelists right now. So we have one question here by Ankita Avadhani, which says, uh, what are the major challenges you faced while implementing RPA processes across all use cases? So over to the panelists. I can take that, Ramzi. So major challenges, right? I mean, the question comes to, you know, how do we realize the benefits? So before you, in the initial stages, right, there's a lot of enthusiasm. You want to take up and prove that, you know, RPA works. You work with the BOs or the departments and yeah, they promise you sky, right? If you automate this one, I'm going to save 10 FTEs, 20 FTEs, right? They tell you everything up front before you can, you know, get that in writing or anything like that. You work with them, you work for two months or three months, get that uh, working. And finally, after automation, they say it's only one FT or half FT. So, so the lessons learned is, you know, you need to have a better governance process. Mainly, you have to get those documented, signed off by business heads that uh, what exactly is the benefit of automation because RPA is not cheap, it's not free. There is time involved, there is technology involved, there is hardware involved. So you got to see the benefits and not everything is automatable. Uh, there are small things that they can do, do probably using a macro in VB, VB scripts. So you got to evaluate accordingly and see the benefits. So have a proper governance structure, you have a proper in intake documents, the templates for automation, how you can measure the benefits. So do that upfront, get, do your homework and then uh, take the big leap. Great. Uh, thank you so much for that, Priyatam. And while I have you here, there is another question that I saw which could be particularly related to this. A question by Yogesh that says, sometimes we don't get the proper requirements from business user. What is the best approach to implementation in this case? And, and as someone who uh, typically faces of these business users, I can see that requirements might change from time to time and it can get, it can put all your plans in jeopardy. So is yeah. It, yeah. yeah? Yeah, so I mean, uh, sort of disappoint you, but uh, it never is a good process requirements. At least in Akun Financial, where I am working, they change constantly. I mean, I'm the same boat like you. I'm also frustrated like you. And uh, I come to terms thinking that, you know, they do change, requirements change. I couldn't change my uh, our requirements partners. And I find, finally changed my attitude, my perception that, you know, you got to work with them with the patients. See, the main, so main issue here is, right, I mean, humans do these activities and they don't realize, you know, all those small, small things they do on the screen. For example, when they, when they move from screen one to screen two, they don't realize that, you know, they click something and probably go for a break and come back. So when they give us the requirements, they don't capture every single thing. But for a bot to automate, they had to capture every small detail, every click, every screen, every process, every transformation from point A to point B. And uh, initially when they give us, they're not serious enough. So they give you at a high level. And uh, when you start implementing, you see that there are a lot of uh, missing, missing requirements. You got to work with them. It's a constant learning process. Unfortunately, I mean, it's not a good process. You, you got to work with them. It changes and that's how it is, at least in my organization. Wish I had a better answer, but that's what it is. <laughs> I understand. So uh, that definitely does make a lot of sense. We have a couple of questions here while we are on the topic. It's by uh, Tamim Rizwan. It says that, uh, can we do discovery phase, that is automation hub, before committing to subsequent phases? Ramji, this yeah. is Deepu here. Uh, yeah, Rizam, if you want to take it up, you go ahead. Go, go ahead, Sand. Go ahead, Deepu, please. Okay. So, um, yes, definitely. Discovery phase is nothing like, uh, you, don't, you don't want to basically commit the subsequent phases, okay? But ideally speaking, when you start your RP journey, right? You, are, you don't want to stop anything during the discovery phase. You are expecting that you are actually going to create a pipeline for you, a roadmap for your institution, where you have processes which you are planning to basically roll off. Might be in a quarterly basis, you are going to push around 15 to 20 processes. And on an yearly basis, you are having around 60 to 100 processes that you are actually going to, uh, going to publish and going to deploy. So 
for that purpose we started with the proper planning so this first step of basically the discovery phase is ideally to create a roadmap so some of the processes we, we normally conduct workshops with the clients when you conduct the workshop with the client we expect the we actually educate them for the rpa and we teach them what rpa can do now the next phase of that we actually start getting inputs from the, all the different departments from the clients and they will suggest that okay some of the use cases which they feel that is an ideal candidate for rpa sometimes it has happened that out of the around 200 250 use cases that we already got from the customer we might not be able to automate all of them because some of them because it all and it all depends on the understanding so uh, one particular uh, if you say that okay we can actually extract the data from uh, a particular document and automatically run uh, this one uh, run a particular erp flow if, if, even if the statement sounds to be pretty st uh, strong there are actually uh, my, when you actually do a dissection of the process, we will find that there are actually human elements which are involved in that. For example, you push it into ERP, you cannot just publish it just like that. There is somebody who has to review and who has to approve that thing because some um, some, for some of the uh, uh, invoices or the purchase orders above this much amount, you cannot just do that. The company has a habit of hard, uh, filing hard copies because it has been doing for a long time. One day we, uh, as, a, as a consultant, if I go and tell the customer that, uh, you don't do this from tomorrow onwards. You already have an ERP system. You don't want to do hard filing. That, that won't happen. So some of the processes which we identify will not actually become an RPA candidate. Might be around 20 to uh, 15 to 20 processes which we uh, uh, get as part of a workshop will be coming in. So to your specific question, yes, discovery phase doesn't need to be having. You don't need to basically conduct a discovery phase expecting that you have to do RPA. This is something that I would say that the terminology of the discovery phase, we just ascended it, but any institution would be already doing this as part of operational excellency. Okay. So there would be so many processes that has been actually happening. Automation has been there for a longer time. So you guys would have already identified this process. There is a scope of uh, uh, improvement in that. And there, if you can do something, okay, now this process, if you write a script in Excel, it can actually do that. But there is another process which actually this guy had to copy the data and put it into the system, log in and click something. So as of now, there is no technology which can connect this thing. When RPA comes into picture, it comes as a bundle and you can do that. So identifying the processes and doing RPA doesn't have any direct connect. But if you do it in a proper structured way, your flow will be seamless. But obviously, it's not like everything will work out like Pritham mentioned from his experience itself. There are, would be challenges, but the ideal way to do that is Start, design, start planning for something, then you create a roadmap, and then you do the implementation. That would be a seamless flow. Pritham, if you want to add anything, just please go ahead. No, no, uh, Deepu, I agree with what all you said. Well put. Well said. Thank you. Great. Great. Thank you so much for inputs. So there are a couple of questions here along the same, uh, uh, you know, one is by Tamim Rizwan and one is by Ankita Avadani. So, Asks, what skill sets do you need internally for setting up internal RPA COE to drive automation? And along with that, Ankita compliments with what is a basic setup or infrastructure or checklist that a company needs to begin with. So skill set wise, right? I mean, uh, see RPA, all these tools, they claim, you know, you don't have to have any skill sets. Everybody can start learning, but uh, I would take that with a pinch of salt. Uh, so at a, at a minimum, right, you need some technology background into a .NET or a uh, C sharp or even uh, into some uh, enterprise data, uh, Python or uh, any other automation tools. So once you are well versed with the automation of the process, how you automate, uh, then you know you can easily transition yourself into RPA. So skills wise, if you have anything, any one of those backgrounds like .NET or C sharp or, or Python, you're good. You're good. You can easily pick up RPA. And uh, infrastructure wise, environment wise, uh, this are mainly all these RPA works on a Windows background. So you need to have a Windows. Uh, uh, VMs. So we decided to go with uh, Amazon Cloud. So, uh, I'm not sure how feasible it is for everyone. Uh, Akon is uh, has a contract with Amazon for our enterprise cloud. Uh, so we actually put everything on our cloud, uh, all all our RPA environment, orchestrator, bots, everything. And it's uh, so one advantage of cloud is you can uh, scale up or scale down. If you think that the Windows uh, Server that you procured for a bot, it's not enough. It's not good enough. Then you can quickly scale up into different configuration. Or you can also scale down. So the costing also will be based on you know uh, usage. So a lot of costing factors, and it's not easy. The costing, you say it's simple, but again, the start of costing. 
so you may not save much uh, going to cloud as opposed to having a native uh, data center. Uh, but again, it's it's your choice where you work, organization choice. So mainly it's a Windows Server, you know, and uh, either orchestrator or bots. Everything is based on deployed on Windows environment. Hope that answers my question. Yep. Thank you so much for that, and hope uh, Kavim and Ankita are satisfied with the answers. I have another uh, uh, couple of questions here. One is by Srinivas Dobhati. Do you have cases in education sector? I know we've done work with some uh, Manipal uh, Global Education. Do you want to shed some light on that? Uh, yeah, Ramsi, uh, Deepu here. So uh, I would like to put it this way. Yes, as you mentioned, we have done some of the use cases with uh, or the engagements with the education sector. With this particular use case, whichever you mentioned for Manipal, what we have done was, I won't exactly put it as an education sector, that was more like us, Manipal group actually, they offer online courses for um, uh, students, okay. So whenever somebody actually enrolls for a particular UK, uh, particular uh, course offering where they need to basically uh, need a system or a VM, they have to basically allocate a VM for them and they will be given credentials for logging into that particular VM. So this was like, this comes as part, as part of a ticketing system and this used to come to the IT and they had, were actually doing this round the clock. Okay, so of course they were not working 24 by seven, but requests used to pile up and there was an SLA, uh, there was actually waited as a delay. It's better to give the app, uh, system up and running as early as possible so that the courses can continue. So this was completely automated using RPA where uh, we actually extracted the data from the ticketing system. And there were three applications, basically you have to create an ID for the user in the system, provision a VM, VM spinning basically, and then uh, set a, a temporary user ID password, and then communicate the same to the particular employee, or sorry, to the student through the mail. So I know that this is not specific to uh, this one, uh, to the educational sector. Uh, another, another use case that we have worked on is that uh, how to basically automatically uh, schedule the uh, sessions, right? So if there is a way, uh, this actually, uh, just a moment. Yeah. So this is basically how we want to plan, schedule, assign trainings and collating the feedback. So most of the time, whenever after attending the sessions, people will actually click the, this one and you will be getting so many mail reports and so many mails in the first one. Now, how to collect that information. Some of the tools already have that thing inbuilt, but if you guys are using any of your existing email for performing that activity, right? You might be having some manual tasks and all those things to consolidate all this information for reporting purposes and to plan for the next step. So there also we can actually use RPA for doing the same repeated uh, structured tasks. Then uh, other than that, uh, yeah. So we also had actually seen one of the use cases with one of the universities in the Middle East. Uh, we are still working on that, uh, on that as of now. So they had a specific use case in which they were having an Oracle Apps ERP system and the staff actually whatever logging in, uh, logging out and all those things happening over there has to be reconciled with another system, biometric system which they are using. So uh, these are some of the use cases which we have done. Most of them are, I won't say that it's exactly specific to uh, education sector, but on a, um, on a, I would say that we basically need to uh, see RPA not as specific to any sector. Like most of the use cases that even Deepu Matthews has explained, right? Any process which you feel that the same step needs to be done on a daily basis or whenever you get a request or on a, or a monthly basis, there's a humongous amount of activities that has to be done. You can write down those steps one by one. The same things has to be performed might be every year. And, but the thing is that on that particular day, since the volumes are very huge, right? You can't actually, you will be putting three or four guys around the clock. So any process which is a system, which is basically a role-based process, which can data is digital, you can actually access everything from a system. This can be considered as an uh, ideal candidate for RPA, irrespective of any sector. Okay, it can be manufacturing, it can be education, it can be financial, it can be HR, different departments also. I hope that answers. If anybody wants to add anything to that, please go ahead. Ramzi. Yeah, I think uh, that definitely does answer the question. So I have I have another question here by Mr. Ian Andrew, which asks, do you have any examples of using RPA to support senior professional staff, not just clerical staff? So if uh, I, Mr. Ian Andrew could also unmute and uh, throw more clarity on the question, but if the panelists have any 
comments in that can uh, definitely go ahead yeah can you clarify about the by the question uh, ian i mean what exactly do you mean by you know support for senior staff can you hear me yes yes we can hear you yeah um so i'm referring to i don't know, say say an engineer so an engineer is obviously uh using his creativity to design elements of a building but has an awful lot of um menial tasks that he has to complete as well uh, let's say 20 30% of his time is there a way that i can use rpa to uh, automate those tasks freeing up then his creativity time for that 20 or 30% yeah definitely right see rpa is to automate all the the mundane repetitive uh, tasks that occur in high volumes so there will be multiple task your employees or senior staff may do right but you know the question is you know as it in is it in high volumes right because the time you invest in rpa has to be economical so the time you spend or the money you spend for automating that should be worth to what you what you effort if one person is doing one one task may not be really uh, cost savings but let's say across your company across your team right multiple senior people are doing the same task uh, in, in different silos then you know maybe it's a good to automate but the question yes you can definitely use automation to do any front end automation or back end automation rpa can definitely help you but again there are factors in uh, what to pick for automate whether it uh, is it cost sensitive cost sensible or uh, economically it's uh, viable so you should evaluate that before you decide okay thank you thank you pradeep just to add on to that we had sure, actually had some use cases in which uh, uh, we had to basically publish some of the machine drawings in some of the applications right so as a uh, it was basically an automobile customer and the machine drawings were actually available in one of the systems it had to be basically extracted and mailed into some of the key stakeholders basic uh, during on a, on a repetitive basis so one use case we had actually uh, discussed and we had done a poc on that similarly there was another use case in which uh, there were n number of i, I won't say that it is for a, a senior management a senior uh, ex, ex, uh, individual but it's like uh, there were n number of items available for which the catalogs has to be downloaded from different sites and the data from the catalogs used to come in different formats and the data had to be extracted and punched it into their system so that the internal team can refer to the latest manuals so any 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 company for that matter who is actually working on the engineering space manuals or the different uh, parts which they are using in the automobile sector right each part might be having a different variation or something like that comes up so it won't be directly flowing into their system you have to log into the uh, corresponding vendor application or vendor site identify find that particular manual download it and basically keep a copy so sometimes what happens is this is this can't be done on a daily basis right and these two systems are outside they don't talk to each other so somebody has to manually do it and most of the times it might be an on demand because when somebody is working on it they find that there is a new version that has come up over there you pick it up and put put it over here update the systems so this also like it's all dependent like how much like what priyatham mentioned right if this activity is been done by one person in a month or in a year once in a while and there are only 100 different parts that you are talking about then it might not be an ideal candidate because how much time you need to build this activity and how much time actually is being or this actual uh, manual work is there it actually won't match up yeah ramji i think uh, just wanted to add that also yeah thank you very much uh, deepu and priyatam for answering uh, ian's question so i think moving on to the last unanswered question that i have here this is probably on a technical level but i have a question here by chiran gv can rpa be used for extracting data from physical documents during the automation so so that's a chiranjeevi you know what you mentioning that right? is called ocr so ocr has uh, uh, goes in different layers of complexity anywhere from easier to you know very complex again ocr right when you talk about ocr optical character recognition reading uh, documents either scanned documents or native pdfs right for example you get a statement bank statement in email there's a native pdf statement native pdf right so those are very easy to extract so the complexity varies so native pdfs are much easier to extract using ocr and there are a lot of uh, ocr algorithms uh, there are a lot of open source one like uh, pytesseract uh, google uh, microsoft modi and uh, there are a lot of open source they do a pretty good job actually uh, especially especially if it is uh, native pdfs uh, they do a very good job like almost 100% accuracy but uh, let's say you get scanned documents right let's say you got an invoice scanned by somebody else 
and then you get to you need to read that invoice so that's where the complexity involves because in, a, in the physical scan invoice there are a lot of noise that you cannot see in the naked eye right when you see that uh, scan document it may look good to you but again there may be some contours they may scan it in a different angle right they may not scan exactly in the vertical horizontal with a lot of noise that the algorithm goes through and the efficiency or the results depend on how good the resolution is so for ocr typically we say you need at least 300 dpi resolution for a document and they're also very good uh, very advanced uh, ocr tools like abby uh, abby flexi capture again they are paid tools hope that answers your question yep that does and i think we have managed to uh, answer all of the questions and i think that was a really fantastic q and a session thank you everyone for those questions and to deepu and priyatam for answering them in the best possible way so i think uh, that concludes the end of the q and a session shihab over to you to conclude the please uh, thank you ramji so thank you thank you everyone uh, for those valuable insights and helping the attendees understand how rpa can positively impact their bottom line in this tough times especially thanks to priyatam for pitching in and answering few of the questions sure shihab anytime as part of our uh, i mean as uh, some of the panelists mentioned as part of our uh, giving back initiative in this tough times so we have offered uh, during covid 19 uh, doing a one week poc at no cost so that any organization wants to try how rpa can help their uh, organization we can definitely do a free poc and check one of the we always say pick the impactful poc where uh, the majority of the effort is going and uh, how a organization can benefit using rpa we can always uh, do a workshop as well where one of our consultant can spend and uh, spread the awareness of uh, how rpa can uh, benefit the organization so that uh, i mean business users can uh, identify few of the processes in their respective department so we always conduct a build about sessions uh, in many of the organization which has really helped the uh, awareness of rpa inside the organization so fe please feel free to reach out to us and uh, we have a region specific uh, sales team i see that uh, today many of the people uh, joined the call from across uh, far east in india so india sri lanka bangladesh and rest of asia was looked after by ramji and you can reach out to him and uh, singapore and for southeast asia is looked after by nalini and she is available in i mean she is locally available in singapore so you can reach out to her our contact details are there in the slide so similarly we have uh, uh, ubaid who is looks after uh, oman uae and rest of the gcc country and his details are there in the slide and uh, we have agdas uh, who looks after saudi and qatar market so we have good number of clients from this region uh, where we are helping their rpa journey and today as uh, ramji mentioned in the first slide we have 100 plus consultants and we are the only usn partner for ui park for rp implementation so we have good number of consultants who can help you in identifying the use cases and uh, build your rp journey so finally thanks one and all for joining and taking your time and uh, thanks to all the panelists uh, doing this wonderful presentation thank you ramji Yeah, thank you, Shia. And I think uh, before we conclude, I, we just had one last-minute question come up again by Shridhar uh, Doki Parthi. Uh, once again, to all the panelists, when we think of implementing RPA in an enterprise, we might need to work and integrate multiple systems. Those could be on-premise or cloud. How do you manage it, and will it be realistic? Without the tasks, don't really make much sense. So, how can we convince business users? Ramzi, you actually broke up. You know, can I repeat the question? Apologies. I'm sorry. Let me let me try again. So, when we think of implementing RPA in an enterprise, we might need to work and integrate multiple systems, which might be on-premise or cloud. How do you manage it, and will it be realistic? Without the integrations, the task won't make much sense. So, how can we convince business users? So, when you access application, right? I mean, uh, it doesn't matter where it is. Right? It's a cloud or a uh... Uh, on prem on prem because the application is used uh, access using a web url i mean most likely i guess right or maybe a hot client on your uh, desktop so it should not matter where your application hosted and that was not a factor in you know, in deciding whether to upload the automate or not at least that's what i came across because uh, uh, where i work not one 
we also had a very small very big footprint of on prem and then we moved to aws amazon cloud so i mean we could not move everything from on prem to cloud because somewhere legacy applications and we just could not migrate either they had to be killed off or you know or if it's critical we had to live with those applications and you know take a small space rack space in a private uh, uh, on prem data center so yeah but still we have, we, we were able to work with them right i mean because the way we operate and the way we integrate with these applications doesn't change in the front end so as long as you know it's a uh, data center wise in the infrastructure wise it's handled in the back end who got on this question or deep we can add you know if any more uh, thoughts and please i'll just give a simple example so i'm just uh, might please, not say yes. hypothetical uh, scenario so let's assume that we are having a mainframe application which somebody is daily accessing at some particular forex rates forex rates from one particular site let's assume that there is no integration api integration or there is no that file that is flowing in so as of now a manual task is happening where an operator every day morning first logs into that green screen and extracts the data from a particular sites and puts that information into this so we have an on prem mainframe and in that machine we are also able to access a particular site so these two things are actually not in the same environment but we are able to extract we are able to run the same or, or the person who is actually sitting and doing this activity is accessing two different uh, systems which are in two different environments so if you create a bot for doing this this is a very small task okay this particular task where you connect to that particular site which is actually uh, in internet log into that get the data and pick up the data and just log into the uh, the mainframe system or which is on prem for you and enter the data and update it on a daily basis at around 6 o'clock in the morning this is actually what we, it's actually a very simple solution okay so this can be made more complicated where three or four systems are there most of the reconciliation systems involve multiple systems in different different environments because when you talk about uh, the reconciliations in india where uh, most of the transactions actually goes through the rbi uh, npca portal all the data files which are actually uh, all the transactions which are happening are all from coming from the government of india portal you have to basically log in with the credentials provided to the bank extract the data from there and then you have to continue the process in your whether it's a in your core banking application and that data you might have to basically update it to some other system also so for rpa that is the main benefit of rpa where desperate systems were not talking to each other which used to be connected by one particular operations guy or if he was an ops guy that that actually might not be that much costly but the if the activity is done by senior manager right and the data is very critical and it cannot be actually shown to the junior guys and that task has to be done by him we can actually address it by just giving an attendant bot solution to him it will run that process it will create it and it will send the mail only to him if you do it in an attendant mode so the talking or the integration between different systems that is the main reason why rpa is a main topic in the market as of now i hope it answers uh, thank you prayam for adding additional points also thanks deepu thanks ramji thank you so much deepu thank you so much priyatam for the time to uh, you know attend this and be a part of our panel and for answering all those questions beautifully thank you to all of our attendees a kind reminder that the this uh, webinar was recorded we will be sending a copy or a link to the copy of the webinar to all of you latest by tomorrow if anybody has any other questions that we might not have answered you can reach out to us directly thank you once again everyone thank you everyone bye